Hi, welcome to this video. I'm Giselle and I wanted to film a little crochet with me. Uh, the first one of these. I recently started crocheting. I have been knitting for a couple years now and I really love knitting. I want to start selling the knitwear that I make but I never really got around to learning to crochet because it was confusing and the hand movements are different and I just was being lazy and avoiding it and then I recently learned and I'm kind of obsessed it's quite it's more it's a faster reward than knitting usually because I've already made like a bunch of hats and I made some placemats and I just learned how to do a granny square so I want to make a granny square pillow that's what this video is going to be so uh, this is the first granny square that I've made I just did it with a five millimeter hook and cotton yarn and I want to do so I want to make a granny square pillow like a throw pillow for the bed I've seen a bunch of pictures on Pinterest I think Rose Vane, Rose Vaughn, uh, she's really cool. She has a couple, I've seen them on Pinterest and stuff, so that's what I want to make. So, let's get into it. Okay, so to make the granny squares, I'm gonna use three different colors of yarn. I'm using the Drops Paris Unicolor 100% cotton yarn, and I'm using it in the colors light gray, jeans blue and ice blue. For the materials, I'm gonna use a four millimeter crochet hook, some scissors, a ruler, and a tapestry needle. For the pillow insert that I'm using, I'm using one that I got at Hema, and it's 30 centimeters by 50 centimeters. Okay, so this is the granny square that we're gonna be making. It is roughly 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So since our pillow is 30 by 50, that means that we're gonna have to make 30 granny squares, 15 for each side. Okay, to get started, I'm going to start with the jeans blue color and we'll start by making a slip knot and then pulling that through. And then we're going to just chain four. Then we're going to go into that first chain and just do a slip stitch through to close the circle. Next, we're going to chain two and that will act as our first double crochet. And then we're gonna go in and do two more double crochets into the hole. After our double crochets, we're going to chain one and then repeat, do three double crochets, chain one until you have four sets. And once we're done all around, we're going to find the second chain that we created in the beginning and do a slip stitch into that chain to close it off. And then just do another chain, snip the yarn and pull through. And now we're done with the center piece. We're going to next use the ice blue. And to change the color, I'm going to put the crochet hook through one of the holes and then grab the yarn with my hook and pull it through. And then with both strands of yarn, you're gonna chain one so that you have the two strands and then you're gonna separate them and then just chain two more. Okay, and then we're gonna just continue the same of do two more double crochets 
and then you're going to chain one and do three double crochets into the same hole that you just did the other ones into. And then to move on to the next hole, don't chain any, just go straight into three double crochets, chain one, three more, and do it all around. And then to close it again, we're just going to go into the second chain that we did earlier and do a slip stitch. Again, no need to chain after the three double crochet. And then again, just chain, snip, and you're done. And then we're going to repeat the same thing again with the other color. Uh, the only difference is that the middle hole only has one set of three double crochet. So you do three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet in the corners, and then in the middle, just three double crochet onto the next one. Then just continue the process of changing the colors until you've completed the whole pattern. Okay, now we're going to weave in the ends and for this you're going to need your tapestry needle and you just get the ends of the yarn that we just used and weave it through the stitches that we've made back and forth and then just snip it. I ended up actually weaving in the ends as I went because it makes it a lot easier when you're making so many. Okay, so I'm almost done. I This has literally taken me so long. I didn't think it would take me as long as it did, but we're here, it's been like four days. I have, I think about 20. So yeah, I've got, I have about 10 more to go, but I think I'm going to start blocking them and just testing whether it works, so yeah, come along. Okay, here, four, five. Okay, okay. Let's... Okay, how's that look? <gasps> Wait, it looks, it looks good. This could work. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. Okay, so let's block it. So I have some of my foam blocking boards, uh, my tea pins, and then I have, I only have this spray bottle, like a plant sprayer, so I may have to prop up the, stuff that I'm spraying because it might, might not work, but we'll see. Okay, so each uh, little square is about 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And each square on these boards is a centimeter. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, perfect. Grab my pen. Done! Some of them, I still have to finish the squares, but...
done. All 30 of them. Okay, so I'm done making the squares and the granny squares and now I have to get to connect them. So I tried, oof, I tried connecting them. Here's my initial kind of experiment. And I think I'm going to, like this is the front, but I think I'm going to do the seam exposed in the front instead of in the back because I don't want it to have that kind of like bubble. Like I think I prefer the exposed seam, like it's not uncomfortable and I think I prefer it. So this is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take this apart and redo it and I'll show you guys how I seam it all together. Okay, so to connect the two squares together, I'm just using the jeans blue yarn and the crochet hook. So you're gonna get two of the squares and just put them, for me, wrong sides facing together because I want the seam on the outside. And then you're just going to slip stitch along the top of your granny square. So not, not under the whole V, but only on the top part of the V, if that makes sense, like only on the through one loop. And then you're just gonna pull it through and slip stitch along the whole square. I also decided to chain one in between of each of the squares that I'm joining just so that it has a little bit more wiggle room. This is how it looks so far. Just the front panel is done. We'll do the other panel. Just blocking the final panel. Okay, good morning. I just woke up, so ignore the state that I'm in. But, whoa, we're almost done. Um, last night, I finished connecting them and then I decided to block it again because they're just, they were super tight. And now they're perfect, so I'm glad I did that. And now I'm just gonna weave in the ends and then connect it. All right, now I'm going to join the two panels together and I'm using the same method of just doing a slip stitch in the top part of the V and I'm doing that all the way around. I would actually advise to start on a long end so that you can just crochet all around and then have the short end for the pillow insert because I have to just snip it and use it again but it doesn't really matter okay so we're almost there I'm just going to snip the tag off of the pillow now I'm just inserting the pillow and gently putting it in there And now we're going to close it all up. I'm just using some stitch markers to make sure that I have it all perfectly aligned because it was kind of not really working. And I'm just gonna do the same thing that I was doing all around with the slip stitch and we're gonna be good.
and don't forget to weave in the last ends. It's done! I did it! Oh my god, it took me like so much longer than I expected to make this. It took me everything I, every aspect of it, I was like, oh, I'll finish that, you know, today in this amount of hours, and then it would be like midnight and I would be halfway through. So it has been a labor of love, but we are complete. And I am very proud and I love it so much. And you can see some clips like on my bed and whatever and everywhere that's gonna be back there. But yeah, I ended up going with the exposed seam, like doing the slip, not slip stitch with the seam in the front. And then I did a single crochet round all around on each panel. And then I connected it with a slip stitch. And this is the final result. I love it. And I hope you guys do too. And let me know if there's anything else that I should crochet and or knit. I'm a bit better at knitting. <laughs> and yeah, let me know. Love you guys. Bye.